blows it out there, and guess what we decontaminated after that? The fire station. <laughs> it was the cleanest fire station in the state of Idaho. But we got it cleaned up, but we, and we got the engine back in. We should have never left the complex with it like that. But we did, and that, that's, life goes on, and, and that's okay. Now, this was our training tower at the central facilities area. At the time of the SL-1 accident, and by the way, that's one of our ladder trucks we had in that era. But So what they did was they wanted to set up a scenario, the people who were investigating this and wanting to go into the SL-1, where are we going to do this? Some brilliant person said, oh, I know exactly where we're going to do this. So he says, down in central facilities, they got this tower here. And we'll just use that second floor and make a, a mock-up of the SL-1 floor that we're talking about. So they came down here, and they, before they even went in to do work on that, they made a mock-up here and practiced what they were going to do. And eventually we lost that. They tore it down. But they used that training tower for that purpose, and it worked just fine. And they were happy they had that. It was you know, they could do what they wanted to with it, but eventually we lost that. Now, this is the example of the mask. Those masks back in that era, you did not, well, <coughs> what do you know what's going on? Can you hear me? I don't think I can hear you, but I'll tell you what's going on. You can't, you couldn't even talk. The radio alarm shop people came along and they built a speaker system. We did all this out there. They wouldn't, they wouldn't invent it yet. They made that speaker system right there and plugged it into the face piece here so at least the officer could shout commands to his men. There was only one had them, and that was the officer, but he could at least shout commands to the people that he was in, that was under his command and tell them what to do or where to go and how to get there and all that kind of thing. But that, and, and that was invented right out here also because we needed some way to communicate. And that, that uh, is what went on. Now, to do all this over again, the fire department out there now is much better trained. We, we did our thing. We did our thing in the, the way we thought it should be done, and uh, we did it the best we knew how. I was looking for something here. I don't see it now. Uh, we did it the best we could at the time, and I'm still here to talk to you folks and tell you firsthand how things went, how things really was. We walked into that incident naive as we could. And uh, that's a bad thing. Safety should have, we should have taken more problems. We should have never went in there the way we did. But we did. We thought that was the thing to do. And we did it. We found those people. We knew there was nobody moving around. They hadn't evacuated the plant and gone somewhere else. We did find them, and uh, that was a good thing. So, in, in closing, and I wonder if we can have some questions if you want. In closing, to quote a radio, famous radio commentator, his name was Paul Harvey. Paul Harvey would say, just a minute, let me go back to just a minute here. Paul Harvey would say, and that's the way it was on January the 3rd, 1961. Folks, have a good afternoon. Thank you. There's a question. Did you linger at the top of the stairs and did they ever estimate how much dose you received?
Okay. Watch, we're using a film badge to monitor this. Now, film badges were as accurate as they could be for the era that they were in. I'm sure they're much more accurate now. You pin it on you, away you went. Okay. <laughs> when I got back, got back to the station and they collected these, and actually they collected them out of where we stripped our clothes off because that stayed around. They collected them and processed them and they reported back to me that I had had at least an 18R total body dose of radiation over that thing. The fire chief got slightly more for whatever reason, I don't know, I think they had 22 or 23 R per hour, his dose. Now what is really, to answer the other question, what's really interesting is I changed jobs and I went from the fire station, when I re fire department, when I retired, I went out to the chemical processing plant, and for 10 years I was an instructor instructing the emergency response teams out there. And when I went to work out there, they wanted to know, what is your radiation dose? Oh, that's no problem. We'll just go to the records and we'll find out what it is. <laughs> so we go to the records. Guess what we found? I've never been there, sir. It's disappeared. There was no uh, record of me ever having a dose of radiation. We knew that I was there. We knew I went in there following the chief, you know. But we never did find a record that I ever had any radiation exposure. And isn't that interesting how things just kind of disappear <laughs> when you don't want them to know about them. And so they, as of now, unless they found some, and I'm sure they didn't, I've never been there. And so if anything comes along, I got any health problems, that ain't caused by us, you, you weren't there. And this happened to several other people in the area. They've had articles in the paper and so forth saying that uh, I went, I've got cancer now. I went, I worked at the aircraft nuclear propulsion site and I mean, now I got cancer. I want some help from the government. In my case, you weren't there. And so that, that's something that really irritates me is the fact that it just disappeared. I'm not there. I did the best I could, I did what was asked of me, but all, guess what? It's gone. Well, as far as I know, it's gone, it disappeared. That's what the guy, I guess, I got shredding machines for, I don't know. Okay. Question. So, what changed after the response that you made that evening? What changed on responses afterwards? I mean, did you get the training that you needed? Did those kinds of things. Okay. <laughs> you would not believe, folks, the amount of radiation training we received. <laughs> I mean, it was overwhelming. Uh, because all of a sudden, oh, oh, well, we better start training you. And they, they immediately <coughs> set forth training. We brought in people from outside. We all learned something beyond just looking at what the radiation instrument was doing. But another interesting thing is you go down to the dentist and you lay on the chair and the dentist comes in and says, oh, you need in your teeth x-ray. Guess what they do? They come out with a nice lead vest to put on you so you're protected. <coughs> there is our protection entering a radiation field, a standard city of Idaho Falls fireman's outfit. And that's all we had. That's all we had. 
Another thing is when we left the complex and couldn't see where we were going, the face piece was taken off and put on a comfortable respirator was used after that. But still, the, they all, all quickly forgot about fighting blazing infernos and all of a sudden we were sitting in classrooms doing the radiation